Hi, my name is Gil Fonger, and I'm the president and CEO of Markland. You know, it's interesting on this day. Actually, our governor is giving his uh, his FY17 budget. It's interesting that he's giving the FY17 budget since we actually do not have an FY16 budget. I don't really blame him for that, all that, but it's uh, kind of difficult for him to bring a new budget when we don't have actually a current budget. But I do want to talk about what this budget impacts. It's been eight months that we've been without a state budget, and so I want to give just just three points about some of the effects it's having on Markland and I would say the overall not-for-profit sector. The first is is that this has really been devastating to the not-for-profit sector. Now, not so much on Markland and those of us that are providing Medicaid services because by court order the state has to pay us and they've been paying us at the FY15 level. So in some ways we, you know, we've been okay but it's, it's really going to be a devastating thing to many uh, that are providing those services. But many needed services that are having to be shelved or discontinued because they're not getting any funding. We actually had a contract with the state through DHS that had to be canceled because uh, that for respite care because it was not covered under the Medicaid uh, court order. So that devastation to the not-for-profit world, I think, is, is, is important to understand. And, and from what I have uh, heard from our state legislators and from listening to the governor just uh, actually about a week ago, he came and I spoke, listened to uh, a breakfast meeting where he had uh, comments. It doesn't look like we're going to have a budget maybe even before no November. So it'll be, a, it'll be amazing that we're going to be well over a year, maybe a year and a half before we actually have a state budget. And that's going to be a very difficult situation. And you hope that the parties, especially between Speaker Madigan and the governor, can get together to figure out kind of how to bring some no-nonsense changes to our state. So first is the devastation of the not-for-profit sector. The second area is, is because there's a lack of state budget, there's not enough revenue that's coming in. So even though the state does get revenue every, every month, there's not going to be enough revenue to actually fully fund their court-mandated requirements. So what's going to happen is I think there's about $5 billion backlog uh, just in this year's budget, so that backlog is going to continue to increase. And so, what's going to happen is the state's going to have to depend upon basically not for profits to fund the state uh, state obligations because we're we have a line of credit that we're having to dip into, and that's going to increase. It's been about uh, we have uh, an AR ninety, so we have accounts receivables ninety days plus that we track on a regular basis, and that's been hovering between a half million and a million dollars. And that's going to increase. And fortunately, at Markland, we are, have been very uh, conservatively uh, budgeted for years. Uh, we have a line of credit. We do have an endowment. So we are in good shape financially, but there's going to be a lot of not-for-profits. Even the ones that are being funded under the Medicaid waiver uh, by court order, many of them are going to be in very, very difficult shape, especially if it's not until November that we have uh, a budget. So the third area that I think is important is that, you know, this lack of a budget has really, um, in some ways, it, we can't come to grips with the fact that our sector has not had a rate increase in serving people with developmental disabilities. We have not had a rate increase since 1996. For 20 years, we've had the same rate. And so the gap between what the state pays us and what it costs to bring this care has only continued to increase. And we're very efficient. 90 cents out of every dollar that we receive goes directly to client care. And yet our gap is almost $20,000 a year per client, which means we have to raise over $2 million a year to provide service to 117 uh, full-time clients that, that live with us, for our 40 students and our 15 community clients. So we continue to bring care to all of them, but the gap continues to increase. And so let alone the state can't pass a budget, but they also aren't dealing with the issues that, that all of us in this sector, working with individuals with developmental disabilities, we're having to work with budgets that basically date back to 20 years, and we're trying to continue to make it uh, work. It's going to come a tipping point where it's going to be more and more difficult. You know, there's 33,000 families in the state of Illinois that, are, that have children with developmental disabilities living at home who are over the age of 60. 33,000, that's more than are in t all the state operations in the entire state. It's, it's, a, it's an entitled wave of people coming. 
So the state has got to start figuring out not only how to continue to fund their current operations, but really how to enhance those rates so that the people that, are, that need to be served can be served. So just wanted to kind of bring you up to date where we are with the, the current budget. You know, it's, it's, it's not on one side or the other. Uh, the governor has a lot of great points about some structural reforms that need to be made in the state. And I'm sure Speaker, Speaker Madigan feels like he has some points to be made too. And we hope that both parties can come together to figure out how to really come to some necessary changes within the state to make this the kind of place that we all want this to be to live. So, so thanks so much for your support of Markland and allowing us to continue our mission to make everyday life possible for individuals with profound disabilities. Thank you so much and God bless you.